हेलो एस्पेरेंट्स टुडे इज दिसंबर 14 2019 एंड दिस इज अवर कोर्स अप्रोच 365 एंड वी आर हैविंग द सोर्सेज ऑफ द हिंदू पीआईबी इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एंड सम मिसलेनियस सोर्सेज टू ओके सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम टॉपिक्स टॉपिक वन इज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन 126 अमेंडमेंट बिल ओके द सेकंड इज डीएचसी 2D हेवेल एंड बीवर देन द थर्ड वन इज ट्रैकिया देन आसाम अकॉर्ड देन इंडेक्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन दैट इज आईआईपी then vi sirporkar commission then bogenville then ad hoc committees then pornographic content and then indian spy steel lizard so what is this constitution 126 amendment bill so basically recently parliament had long, uh, passed the constitution 126 amendment and what it amendment says that it is the extension of the reservation for scs and sts but it is somehow doing away with the provisions for nomination of anglo indian so now the uh, provisions for anglo indians will not be there in the lok sabha and the state assembly okay so for the first time anglo indians was appeared in the government of india act 1935 Okay, so according to the present context, Article three sixty six two of the Constitution of India, what it says that an Anglo Indian means a person whose father or any of the male progenitors in the male line is the European descent. So any one male line is the European descent, and that person will be the domicile of India. That person comes the Anglo Indian. Okay. so it is traced only to the paternal that means male lines okay so maternal line will not be there male lines with the help of paternal lines it will be traced that whether the person is anglo indian or not so according to the 10th schedule of the constitution anglo indian members of lok sabha and state assemblies can take the membership of any party okay within 6 months of their nomination so this is about that, that uh, they can take the uh, they can take uh, their membership but once they do they are bound by their party whip okay so like if they are t- taking a nominations from a party they will be bounded okay so the anglo indian members enjoy the same powers there are same powers as others but they are not able to vote in the presidential elections okay because as they are nominated by the president itself so they are not obviously then they will be not be uh, participating in the vote of the presidential election so under the article 331 the president of india is authorized to nominate two members of the anglo indian community okay so this is about the anglo indian so who select the anglo indian president selects under the article 331 it is given so in the same way governor of the state is authorized to nominate one anglo indian lower house of the state legislature so just like in the center when president is uh, there uh, president can appoint similarly in the state governor will appoint the anglo indian in the state lower house of the state legislature moving on to the next topic dhc2 d heavyland beaver this is an important topic because it is the this one that means dhc 2d heavyland beaver it is the world's first all electric commercial aircraft that means it is not uh, going to run from the petrol it is all electric commercial aircraft okay so it has completed its short flight and e plane operated uh, it was operated by harbor air north america's largest sea plane operator and magnix took off from vancouver in canada so from vancouver in canada it was operated at it was the six passenger sea plane and uh, with the horse power of 750 horses okay so it was uh, it was a like uh, high power it is having it according to the commercial spacecraft but the importance of this spacecraft is uh, it is having a 750 horse power propulsion system but it produces zero emissions okay so this is something very important okay so uh, according to the international air transport association this is an association of international air transport air transport contributes up to 2% of global man man made carbon dioxide emissions so as we are also going in the uh, in combating the climate change this uh, invention can be a little bit a little bit helpful because as uh, the association says that up to 2% of global man made carbon dioxide emissions is because of the air transport okay so as of now existing technologies are cannot help the aviation industry to make significant reductions in emissions but somewhere this hybrid electric system when comes in that it can make a change in the uh, in combating the climate change moving on to the next topic trakia okay so what is trakia so for the first time haryana police claims it is the country's first full sports to 
has adopted a unique barcoding software trachea okay so this is about the harana police so they had adopted a unique barcoding software and uh, it is to ensure that thousands of forensic reports that form the backbone of the criminal investigation system and subsequent trials in the court of law are not tampered with so this is about the like all the forensic reports thousands of forensic reports will be there okay so trachea ensures full proof security of the samples collected from the scene of crime okay so all the uh, track proof uh, full proof security samples will be there in the trachea okay and forensic analysis report will be also there in the trachea okay so system uses the feature of two stage barcoding to maintain the secrecy of the temp samples okay so there are there is a barcoding system but it is the two stage barcoding system in order to maintain the secrecy of the samples so due to the unique barcoding only the authorized investigating officers and forensic science so this is about the trachea then moving on to the next topic assam accord okay so there was a debate on the citizenship amendment bill which was recently passed by the parliament and uh, it flagged the alleged violation of the assam accord by the new law okay so somehow it is opposing the assam accord so the assam accord was a memorandum of settlement which was signed by the government of india and the assam and all the assam students union which is in short known as asu and the all assam gan sangram parishad in new delhi on august 15 1985 so uh, because uh, there were so many other provisions in the assam accord and different provisions were there in the citizenship amendment bill so somehow they were clashing okay so what it says that all those foreigners who have entered assam between 1951 to 1961 they will be given full citizenship including the right to vote okay so this was about the assam accord but those who had done so far 1971 were to be deported okay so this is something which is important because uh, citizenship amendment bill says something else it is having different position provisions and uh, assam accord is having different provisions so somewhere it may be clashing so this is about the assam accord okay so for the period of 1951 to 61 if any foreigner has entered assam they will be getting full citizenship and right to vote but apart from that if somebody is coming after 1971 they will be deported okay so the entrants between 1961 and 71 were to be denied voting okay so this is provision between the uh, uh, entries between the uh, for the people who came from 1961 to 71 okay so there are three provisions now it is cleared we are uh, repeating it again that from 19 people who are coming uh, from 1951 to 61 they will be given citizenship and they will be able to vote also okay but apart from it the entrants who are coming between 1961 to 71 they will be given the citizenship but they will be denied voting but then people who are coming after 1971 they will have to be deported okay so these are the three things and accord sets march 24 1971 as the cut off date okay so this is the cut off date of the accord and as per the clause 15 of the assam accord the ministry of home affairs is the nodal ministry for the implementation of this clause okay and a new department has been has been established in the name of implementation of assam department accord department during the year 1986 okay so the implementation of the assam accord department it will only monitor the work which will be implemented under various clauses of the assam accord okay so this was about the assam accord moving on to the next topic index of industrial production that is iip okay so iip basically it is an index which tracks the manufacturing activity in different sectors of the economy okay so it measures the industrial production for the period under review and is compiled and published by cso every month okay now what is cso cso is the central statistical organization and it operates under the ministry of statistics and program implementation in short it is known as mospi okay so there are so many criteria in which the index have been tracked so electricity is there crude oil coal cement steel refinery products natural gas and fertilizers but these are the eight core industries that comprises about 40% of the weight of items included in the iip okay so these are the eight core sectors because secondary sector is very important as per the industrial production data okay so in the index 40% has been covered by these eight core industries 
ओके सो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जनरेशन फ्रॉम रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्स हैज़ बीन इंक्लूडेड अंडर द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सेक्टर ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी इज बीइंग प्रमोटेड नाउ डेज ओके देन माइनिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दीज आर दी थ्री ब्रॉड सेक्टर्स इन विच आई आई पी कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स फॉल ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द एरियाज विच सेक्टर्स विच आई पी कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट फॉल दैट इज माइनिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो द सी एस ओ यूज सेकेंडरी डेटा टू रीच द मंथली आई आई पी नंबर ओके सो देर इज अ सेकेंडरी डेटा दैट डेटा इज सोर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस एजेंसीज इन डिफरेंट मिनिस्ट्रीज और डिपार्टमेंट्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ओके बिकॉज डेटा इज इन देयर इट इज बायफ्रगेटेड ओके अदर मिनिस्ट्रीज आर ऑल्सो हैविंग डेटा सो सम हाउ इट इज कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम अदर डिपार्टमेंट्स एज वेल ओके सो डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी एंड प्रमोशन इज द सोर्स फॉर द मेजर चंक ऑफ द डेटा फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ओके बट द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी एंड प्रमोशन डी आई पी पी दिस वन इज द मेन सोर्स ऑफ द मेजर चंक ओके नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक वी एस सिरपुरकर कमीशन ओके सो रिसेंटली इट वॉज इन न्यूज बिकॉज इट हैज बीन सेटअप एंड इंक्वायरी कमीशन फॉर फॉर्मर जज जस्टिस वी एस सिरपुरकर एंड इट वॉज टू प्रूव द सरकम स्टेंस ऑफ द पुलिस एनकाउंटर किलिंग ऑफ फोर पर्सन एक्यूज इन द गैंग रेप एंड द मर्डर ऑफ वेटर इन हैदराबाद सो दिस इज द कमीशन दिस इज द कमीशन विच हैव बीन सेट अप बाय द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दैट दे विल बी लुकिंग आफ्टर द इन्वेस्टिगेशन वॉट एवर हैपन्ड इन द recently happened case in hyderabad okay so keep this in mind vs sirpurkar commission is the name of commission then boganville it is the next topic and uh, it, what it is so autonomous region of boganville it is a chain of islands that lie 959 kilometers northwest of the papua new guinea capital that is port moresby okay so why it is news because it has voted unequally for independence okay so there was a referendum here in the boganville and it saw 85% voter turn out during their 3 weeks of voting with 97.7% of voters choosing independence from papua new guinea okay so uh, these countries have been in clashes from a very long time okay so especially in the papua new guinea so it is the second options so what it is saying that 97% voters choosed that they want independence from papua new guinea which was remaining but with greater autonomy from png okay so the referendum however is non binding so this is like uh, people are voting it is but non binding okay it is not like if people are voting then that will happen okay so the ultimate outcome will be determined by a vote in papua new guinea's national parliament so it will be uh, in the hand of papua new guinea's national parliament and then negotiation Uh, negotiations will happen between the Papua New Guinea government and the autonomous Bougainville government. Okay, so this was about the Bougainville. Moving on to the next topic, ad hoc committees. Okay, so recently ad hoc committees uh, are there, and uh, uh, it was in news. So ad hoc committees, what are ad hoc committees? They can be divided into two categories. Okay, so in the ad hoc committee, one is inquiry committee, and the second one is advisory committee. okay so inquiry committees are constitute, uh, constituted from the time either by the two houses or a motion adopted in that behalf or by the speaker chairman okay so these are the inquiry committees which are uh, either made by in the two houses motion can be passed and by the speaker can make it in order to inquire into report on specific subjects so whether if there is an inquiry inquiry if there is a need of inquiry then inquiry committees is being formed then there is advisory committees okay so it include select or joint committees on bills which are appointed to consider and report on particular bills okay so there is advisory committees uh, which will advise some new uh, uh, provisions in any particular bills so whether so there are outcome so what ad, more ad, advice will be there Uh, it will be given by the advisory committees so these committees are distinguishable from the uh, other ad hoc committees in as much as they are concerned with bills and the procedure to be followed by them laid down in the rules of procedure so there are some provisions and the rules and procedures are there and they have to go according to it okay so they are distinguished from the other ad hoc committees so these are the one okay so these are having different type of conditions procedure is different in the inquiry committee as well as in the advisory committee then moving on to the next topic pornographic content okay so why we are discussing it because in recently in rajya sabha the chairman m venkaiya naidu has recently converted an informal group of mps constituted to study issues related to pornographic content on the internet and social media platform in an ad hoc committee okay so as we are uh, recently read that ad hoc committees they are advisory and there are inquiry okay so now they will be studying 
okay and they will be studying men member of in the uh, group of mps they will be studying that whatever problem and whatever issues are there related to pornographic content in the internet and social media platforms okay moving on to the next topic indian spinny tailed lizard okay so why we are discussing it because um uh, um uh, Unlike most other lizard species who can lead independent solitary life, these creature live in colonies. Okay, so uh, like usually lizards live separately. Okay, they don't live in colonies, but the Indian spiny-tailed lizard lives in colonies, and they are found in the Thar Desert in Rajasthan. Okay, so it's an in indigenous species of India. So unlike any other lizard in the subcontinent. these lizards are vegetarian an unusual dietary specialization in a desert with scant rainfall and sparse plant life okay because they are found in rajasthan so obviously there will be this uh, condition will be there okay so unlike other herbivores the spiny tailed lizard lacks the teeth to chew their greens okay so uh, they are not having the teeth okay uh, other uh, unlike uh, other herbivores these are not having the teeth but still they survive so here i have pasted the pic of these uh, lizards that is indian spiny tailed lizards and they used to live in colonies so as parents this was today's lecture thanks for watching